Okay, top of the hour. Welcome back everyone from break. I'm Jennifer Weston from Equinox. If you haven't heard my voice already at the conference. Very briefly, I'll just thank our sponsors one more time as we get started for Lightning Talks. Thank you to Equinox, Emerald, and Mobius for being champion sponsors of the conference. There's still time to sign up. If you want to sign up for Lightning Talks, we have a few um, slots left there. If not, I'm just going to wax poetically about the cataloging interest group when we have time at the end of this session. So this, I'm just going to turn things over to Mickey. You can introduce yourself and take Well, thank take you it very away. much, Jennifer. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad to be kicking off our lightning talks for the conference, and I hope that others will sign up and share their interests and other um, uh, things with people. I think that's one of the main reasons we're all here. So thanks very much. I'm Mickey Colwell with the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. We are a statewide consortium that is not owned by or operated by the State Library. We're an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we are in the midst of an interest change. We've been around for 10 years this year, and in up to this point, this has been an all-volunteer organization. So the title of my lightning presentation is Future Proofing Missouri Evergreen, and some of you may be familiar with that term, future proofing. It comes from the organizational development world, and it really means uh, anticipating future changes and building in organizational features that will uh, minimize the shock and stress of a predictable change. And we are predicting quite a bit of change as our consortium continues to grow. We have uh, 60 members with four new members coming in in the next calendar year. So we are continuing our growth and do anticipate uh, growth into the near the next 10 years um, somewhere along those lines. So um, what, what we did to future-proof our organization, I think, um, uh, happened on a lot of different levels. So I want to just quickly go over those with you. The first thing we did was to change our governance and management structure. Uh, up to this point, as I said, for 10 years, it was an all-volunteer organization. Um, we had a, a volunteer board with uh, four principal officers, committees. Um, we switched things up very recently with a change to more of a legacy leadership structure where we have an immediate past president, and we expanded and clarified the roles of the vice president, the treasurer, the secretary, that sort of thing. And we assigned oversight areas to the four at-large directors on the board and put specific duties in writing uh, there. Um, we're also going to uh, start seeking outside funding uh, and leverage our 501c3 uh, status uh, to do so. So we have lots of stuff on the drawing board to, uh, to tackle, but that management change and that structural change is very important for the bylaws. We're also hiring staff, and obviously we can um, we can do that quickly and easily with contract staff, which is, is exactly what I am. I'm a contract staffer. I am a part-time executive director. Um, I think our contract staff is going to be growing um, in the next couple of years as we bring on other folks. Our very first contract uh, employee was a consortium cataloger that we were able to get grant funded for a year, and uh, we were very successful in that regard. Our consortium catalogers excellent and brought uh, brought on the uh, certification program, which the cataloging committee had been wanting for a long time to provide some standards and structure around our cataloging. So I was hired in January 2022. We had a consortium cataloger that was hired as a staff person, and we're looking to future hires uh, to build the organization. Um, obviously, as executive director, uh, my function is more of the, uh, the COO of our organization. Um, and my job is to coordinate um, the volunteer board activities activities as well as any committee projects that happen. Um, we'll also um, look at future hires for migration specialists, technologists, membership engagement managers, trainers, that sort of thing. And of course, we'll be working much more closely with our state library, which is our principal funding organization. Um, we'll be looking at um, um, working with our other statewide organizations um, that provide courier delivery service, for example, and our uh, technology backbone, MoreNet. That's the name of that organization. We also are working very much with our vendor partner, and we hope to do some specific things in that regard to future-proof uh, Missouri Evergreen, and that is to streamline our migration process, to customize some migration templates in the future, um, target training, and sort of streamline that whole process, and then um, really enhance our pre-migration preparation and extend uh, onboarding assistance to libraries 
Um, so these are all um, things that we're going to do in addition to, of course, our member-driven development projects, which we'll continue to pursue with, with our vendor partner, Equinox. Um, we outsource um, certain services in our organization, legal accounting um, authorities, um, catalog content enhancement, that sort of thing. Uh, but we really are looking to um, build in some additional kinds of support for members, including um, enhancements to our member web website, which we kind of use as an intranet. And um, we'd like to uh, add a knowledge management platform in the near future. So those are the, some of the steps that we're taking to future-proof our organization. And I hope that if you have any questions or, or would like to know more about how we're, we're proposing to reshape our all-volunteer consortium into something that's a little bit different for the near future, uh, you'll reach out. I certainly hope you'll uh, offer your uh, suggestions, uh, if you have any, to how we can best um, do that. It's a work in progress, and we're very lucky to have excellent leadership, uh, an excellent mentor partner, and some really wonderful members uh, moving into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. That was a wonderful overview of what you're doing in just a matter of five minutes, but you've done so much work and it's inspiring. And I can see see the direction you're going is gonna be even more exciting. Thank you. Mickey, do you wanna share your um, email address in the chat box so people can Happy get to do that, you bet, absolutely. And of course, you, people can get in touch with Mickey throughout the conference here on Hop In. Right. If anybody has questions, it looks like we'll have time during the lightning talk. So feel free to put them in chat and we will circle back if we want to. Thanks. There's Mickey's email address in the chat for everyone. All right, Rogan, you ready to go? Sure. I'm going to share my screen for this and drop a link in the chat. I am kind of doing the opposite of what Mickey is doing. Mickey is talking about his organization that he's with and all the great stuff they're doing. Uh, I am not, however, speaking as an Equinox employee for a couple of minutes here. I am putting on my community hat. This is a blog I run called Emerald Elephant. It is updated infrequently because I only update it when something occurs to me that's of interest. And you can see some of the topics down here I've worked with. The link is in the chat. And what I attempt to do is go through Evergreen's database and break things down, break down some misunderstandings, break down things that are unobvious, how to do, maybe some more obscure tasks, and explain some of the database structure, in this case, payments. Um, I was thinking of it the other day because I have some new topics after a long while of not having any that I want to plug in there. It takes me a little while to do these posts because I put a fair bit of effort into going through things very methodically uh, to help explain what's going on, not only on a technical database level, but in the real world, what that means in terms of consequences to users. So I'm plugging this not really to get viewerships, but because I love to get questions that translate to it. And I did that for the SQL pre-conference this year, and sub several of those topics are going to make it into the blog. But if anybody ever has you know, something like, hey, I wonder how this works. This doesn't make sense to me. Um, why is this like this in the database? I love those as topics. So feel free to send them to me. You can either send them to me on Twitter, and I have my Twitter address here on the blog. Uh, but also, it's available directly on GitHub, and you can always file an issues request. So, there you go. That's it. That's my lightning talk. Send me ideas for content. And you might get a question answered along the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I could say you're almost definitely guaranteed to get an answer. Thanks, Rogan. And again, if anybody has questions for Rogan, we have time here because not all of our slots are taken up for lightning talks. So feel free to drop them in the in the chat there as well. <laughs> Bookmarks immediately. Yeah, we should just send that out to the uh, put a, a link to that on the uh, the main reception page too, so everybody can see it, not just for this session. It's going in my notes for certain. Yeah, responding to Kate, it was not a pandemic labor of love, just a geeky labor of love. 
Um, <laughs> uh, I think both of those get, can coincided at one point for for several of us. Um, but yes, it is, by the way, uh, a personal project of mine. So don't send Equinox support requests to it. <laughs> they will get they will just get referred back to the Equinox help desk. <laughs> Uh, would you consider, Tiffany asked about submitting parts to official documentation. Uh, I would have no objection. I'm not sure where exactly it would live in documentation if we did. Um, I would need to talk to the dig books. Fortunately, I know some of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> and how to find I did you. not think about this. It, it's just been a little side project of mine because, uh, you know, I taught myself the Evergreen Database, and there are parts of it that were very intimidating at times, and I just wanted to demystify it a little bit for others, where I could. I think you also got the suggestion to maybe adding it to the wiki, and community resources. That's a good idea. It should be linked there. If it's not, I'll add it to the wiki. Well, and Andrew's already said we can make that happen. See, committed. Well, not committed yet. That's a strong word. That's not the word I meant to use, but yes, you know. All right. We'll Recognized. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, I know. As soon as I said committed, Andrew, I'm thinking that was the wrong word. That means something terribly specific, which I did not mean to say. But recognized. Okay. Let me check the list to make sure there's nobody else. Well, then. <laughs> yeah, we could let Andrew talk about uh, get for another five or ten minutes if we want. I that means I'm last on the list. It's Jennifer again, and of course I'm always happy to talk about the cataloging interest group, which has gone through a name change this year. And I'm going to drop the link to the wiki in the chat. Cataloging interest group, and I did notice today that it's still got the CWG as the the extension there. I'll fix that. But it's the same thing. I mean, it's, it goes to the same place. The cataloging interest group, and again, not speaking with my Equinox hat on today, speaking with my community hat on today. I, I um, For those of you that I've known for a while, you'll know this, but I worked with the, the cataloging interest group um, for several years before I, I came to work at Equinox. So this has been a, a passion project for me as well that I, I continue to very much enjoy doing. And I um, came into a group that was already preformed and was already meeting annually and, and was already being led by a lot of really strong um, forces in the community that have, you know, have been there since the beginning. And I'm very happy to be a part of it now and to continue to facilitate these calls with the cataloging interest group. We meet on a monthly basis with some exceptions. We take the month of December off and we meet uh, via video conference. All of our meetings are recorded. And so if you miss them, you can catch them later. All the recordings are posted onto the wiki. Our agenda and our notes are posted there as well. We have very specific discussion topics some months, and some months we just look through um, topics that are are on our minds and things we've encountered through Launchpad. So I was very glad uh, to see Taryn um, and others their their session today on Launchpad because we're always encouraging people to get involved in at least in monitoring that or turning to Launchpad to to see what kinds of things people have found and see what kinds of wish list ideas there are. But as a group, we found that people can share things they've encountered, share their uh, ideas for development, and we've actually been able to inform a lot of that and to bring a lot of testing opportunities into the community. Um, with Taryn, you know, leads the bug squashing, and um, the way she does that now, she sends out the list so that we can easily pick off those that are cataloging related, and the cataloging um, interest group then can test that with a very specific focus on how this works on a day-to-day -day business. So um, what that means for the for the community and can then inform it before things are released. They can provide feedback and then, of course, continue to provide feedback afterwards. So in my lightning talk, I wanted to provide the, the wiki link there and then encourage people to join us just by uh, coming to the meeting. Doesn't mean you're going to have to, you know, to, to pick up any task to be part of. It's just a really nice group. Though, if you wanted to volunteer, we are always looking for volunteers. We have all kinds of things that we'd like to do. And I, you know, I personally have a wish list of things for the for the interest group itself to focus on over the next year or two. Um, but 
we have things that we need help with if you want to volunteer to do things like update the wiki and you know if you have problems with the wiki you know right now that's kind of you know my fault but if you have questions let me know i'm always open to suggestions and ideas for updating the wiki so um two calls for volunteers there send me ideas for the wiki or two if somebody has some time and wants to help with that that would be great and then always um, if people have ideas about topics things that they would like to discuss perhaps present but if you don't want to present if you just say hey this is something i'd like to know more about we're always looking for that too so I'll leave that there. Um, there is an organizing committee and Kate just very nicely put a note in the chat there. Kate's on the organizing committee. So we have, uh, I guess, seven or eight of us now. They're on the organizing committee. Again, not exclusive. These are just people that have volunteered to be part of that. So if you're interested in, in helping organize it, let me know. Um, but we work together year round. And, and that's the nice thing about this group is that, you know, when some of us are tied down with our, our real jobs, others have a little bit of capacity to pick up and, and keep this going. And so I'm so very thankful to the, the organizing committee that that helps with this. I guess I'll just kind of leave it there. I'm just saying, come check us out. Come be part of our group. Come share our information, uh, share information with us. And we are, um, lastly, we've got two things going on. We are sponsoring the Authority Fest on Friday, a part of the Hack Fest, free thing. Thank you, Kate. Come on out to the Authority Fest, 11 o'clock Eastern time on Friday. And there is a uh, breakout session here throughout the whole conference. If you want to talk things cataloger E, even if you're just interested in cataloging, if cataloging isn't your primary job, that's fine. We like you too. So it's also not my primary job anymore. So I still love to talk about cataloging. So come check us out in the breakout session. If you have any questions at all, any ideas that come up through the conference and you just want to chat, that's what that breakout room is for. And the wonderful people in the organizing committee are monitoring that throughout the conference. And I took longer than five minutes, but you know, that was my moderator's you know, privilege, I suppose. If anybody has any questions or suggestions for the cataloging interest group, just um, you can drop them here. You can drop them in the breakout session or just email the listserv. I should have mentioned that on the wiki. There is a sign up if anybody wants to sign up for the cataloging listserv. That information is there, too, so that you can get our emails. And I believe that is all we have. I was just reading back through your notes. Thank you for your kind comments. Thanks to everybody that has supported this group. Uh, Andrea, plug for docs. The DIG facilitator, Debbie Luke Bill, will be at DIG at tomorrow's Lightning Talks. Woohoo! If you have ideas about things that should be added to docs, come to a DIG meeting. And, and there's a documentation hack fest too on Friday. We, that's the other thing. The cataloging interest group does like to work with other interest groups. We feel like our, our brother and sister groups deserve as much of our, our attention too because we know what it takes to keep them running. So we like to, to work together as much as possible. So yes, yay. Please check out DIG. That's it for me, folks. And I don't think we have any more lightning talks today. <laughs> and Taryn is so right. Everything does come back to cataloging. I couldn't agree more. Uh, tomorrow's lightning talks will happen same time, three o'clock. So if you have an idea and there's anything you want to present, please come along. There's still a few slots left for tomorrow. Other than that, I will kind of close this session and we can continue to just, you know, sit here for the next 12 minutes or so until the next one kicks off. Actually, no, that's, that's not true. We have a break at 2.30. Uh, from 2.30 to 3, there's a break and we encourage people to visit the exhibitors during that time. I am off schedule. Look at me. It is not break time. At 3.30, we go into the next session. Did, see, this is what happens when I'm talking and, and trying to read at the same time. At 3.30 on track one, we will have Going Fine Free with our very own Rogan Hamby. And at 3.30 on track two, we will have the Acquisitions Interest Group. So we'll give everyone about 10 minutes to take a break, 10 to 12 minutes, and come back and join whichever session you prefer at 3.30. Thanks so much.